The Sabre class was a small, highly compact design of escort vessel which entered service in Starfleet during the late 2360s and was later built in huge numbers during the Dominion War. The class remains in service today, fulfilling the roles of patrol ship, scout, courier, escort, and attack vessel. With a length of 223 meters, width of 150, and height of 62 meters, it's one of the smallest ships commissioned by Starfleet in the period. The vessel had a typical crew of 100 to 120, though for short periods up to a thousand personnel could be embarked. The class was armed with four Type 10 phaser arrays, with torpedo launchers mounted both fore and aft, giving the ship good all-around firepower. The phaser arrays were similarly well-spaced to give the ship nearly complete coverage around the vessel in all firing arcs. Sabre boasted an initial cruising speed of warp factor 9 and a maximum speed of warp factor 9.99 which the vessel could maintain for roughly 10 hours before it would need to stop to prevent her warp coils overloading, though later variants would be substantially faster. The Sabre class can trace its development all the way back to 2358, when Starfleet Command issued a requirement for a new escort vessel to replace the large number of Miranda-class ships which, among other roles, had served in several decades as scout and escorts, roles that the slow and aged vessels were less than ideally suited to fill by this period. Initial designs were submitted as early as 2359. However, a mixture of the Admiralty's inability to decide on a clear mission profile for the vessel and political unwillingness to provide additional funding for yet another new class of starship with the Galaxy family of ships still undergoing final development and testing, meaning that the design was kept on the back burner until 2363. In that year, the Miranda-class USS Patras experienced a fatal warp core failure while conducting exercises with the Third Fleet. Overstress of her drive systems after serving for multiple decades plast her planned service life was quickly determined to be the cause of the ship's loss, and this led directly to a limit of Warp Factor 6 being imposed on all Miranda-class ships in service in any role across the fleet. This loss made the need of a new escort all the more apparent in the eyes of Starfleet. In 2364, a final design of Sabre was accepted, and work began on the first prototype vessel in that year. At this stage, the design was still using isolinear computers and circuitry, with other off-the-shelf components used in an effort to drive down cost in material and manpower. Starfleet suspended development of the Sabre class in 2365 with the discovery of the Borg Collective. As part of a new series of anti-Borg ships, the Sabre was radically redesigned, receiving a new and stronger hull, improved armor plating, bioneural circuitry, an updated warp core and sensor suite, as well as improvements to her targeting and weapon systems to make her more combat viable. These changes, as well as efforts being dispersed around many different new starship designs, led to significant delays in the launching of the prototype of the class, USS Sabre, which would only conduct her trials in 2369. Sabre would complete her trials successfully, her performance delighting the team which examined her, and Starfleet would quickly rush the design into full-scale series production, this decision being due to both ongoing concerns over the threat posed by groups such as the Borg Collective, growing tensions with the, the Dominion, which were first encountered in 2370, as well as the still-ongoing shortage of suitable light ships in the fleet. With the outbreak of the Dominion War in 2373, the Sabre class quickly became a staple of Starfleet formations, serving in numerous roles and quickly proving itself to be a capable and effective light combatant, easily stronger than the Miranda and Centaur class ships it replaced. Although many Sabre class vessels would be lost during the course of the conflict, by war's end the class would nonetheless make up a large portion of Starfleet strength allowing the fleet to rapidly phase out any surviving older classes in the early post-war. 
The class remains in limited production today, with few new ships being needed due to the glut of vessels built during the war. The Sabre is a common sight both in Starfleet battle groups and task forces, as well as along the Federation's borders and internal trade routes. Well liked by its crews, the class seems likely to remain in service into the 25th century in frontline roles. Although it endured an agonizing, decade-long development, the Sabre has proved itself to be a highly effective and popular class. Although small, it combines impressive capability as well as reasonable crew accommodation. The ship will remain a common sight within the Federation for decades to come, a fact that few among the, sh the ship's crews are likely to complain about. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, as you may have been able to tell from what is probably the thumbnail, uh, artwork for this video took a long time. Uh, that was among the most, I think, complicated uh, pictures I've ever done for the channel. Even if my art style is not particularly uh, clever, it can be time-consuming when there's a lot of fiddly little bits, and this was a very fiddly picture to make. So, um, yeah, that's why this video was about a week late. I tried, I really tried, and it just didn't work out. Regularly scheduled videos should resume, hopefully, in a perfect world. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a like, um, subscribe. Star Trek content usually does better on the channel anyway, so I imagine this video will get more views. Uh, but my last video was a sort of uh, video from the channel's Patreon. Uh, on Patreon, I am building a Oberth class in Minecraft to scale with interior. So uh, the last video on the channel was a sort of um, sneak peek into that process. Uh, so if that interests you, watch that video, and you can also check out the channel's Patreon. Also, all of the artwork that I make for these videos is over on Patreon, and you can just sort of go over there and download the art. You don't have to join the channel to do that. Uh, that's something that you can do if there's, I mean, I've made a lot of art by this point, so if there's something that you think looks nice, go for it. Uh, take it, make stuff that's your own, I guess. Um, let's see, what else? I mean, really, I think that's it. Hopefully more regular video posting schedule in future. Uh, check out the Patreon, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's just it. I think I've done the, by this point, um, expected ramble at the end. So, yeah, I don't know what, what more you want. I mean, yeah, I think that's it.